Welcome everyone uh, to this Asia Pacific uh, Genetics Seminar. Uh, this seminar series has been organized jointly by the Genetics Society of Japan and the Genetics Society of Australasia. Uh, my name is Peter Dearden. I'm from Genomics Aotearoa in New Zealand. We are very proud and pleased to host uh, such, a, such a seminar with such a fantastic speaker. Um, I'm really here just to support the, the Zoom and make sure everything is working fine. So I'm going to pass over um, to our, um, uh, uh, the team who are going to be uh, running the seminar. So the, our first person uh, to speak is going to speak some opening remarks and introduce our speaker is Professor Hiroshi Iwasaki. So Hiroshi, over to you. Okay, thank you very much, Peter, for kind introduction. Um, it's my Great pleasure to have a seminar by Professor Tomoko Ota, National Institute of Genetics, Japan. Professor Ota is a world famous genetist working on population genetics and molecular evolution. But I will leave a detailed introduction of her for Professor Inan, who will serve as the chairperson of this seminar. Instead, I'd like to briefly tell you a story about how this seminar series has started. Well, Genetic Society of Japan, JSJ, decided to actively work globally or internationally. It was about three years ago. As a part of this activity, we decided to start collaboration with Genetic Society of Australasia, GSA. But unfortunately, I didn't know any Australian genetist. So I asked Alex, who is an Australian postdoc at OSMI laboratory, which is next, just next to my laboratory. You know that OSMI sensei, Nobel laureate back in Fiji. So Alex worked there, and I asked him to introduce someone. To make a long story short, Alex find out a uh, New Zealand dentist. That was Professor Peter Didatum. Peter Didatum. Did so the president of GSA, the MC today. It was uh, about two years ago. And at the 2021st annual meeting of JSJ held in Tokyo last September, we had a joint seminar session co-organized by Australia and Japan Genetic Societies and with help, with the special help of Peter and the Professor Phil uh, Bataham. You know, that was a great success. And this success, become an initiation why we had this Asia Pacific Genetic Seminar today. In this way, today we have the first epoch making seminar that will open our new friendship among Pacific and Asia genetic communities in the coming new era. So everyone, Please enjoy Professor Ota's great seminar with many inspiration. Thank you very much. Thank you. I, uh, that's very, very kind words, uh, Hiroshi. I'd uh, like to call on uh, uh, Professor Hideki Inan to um, introduce our speaker for the day. Uh, I'm Hideki Inan from Sokendai, Japan. I feel very honored to introduce Dr. Ota as the very first speaker of Asia Pacific uh, Genetics Online Seminar Series, organized by the Genetics Society of Australia, Asia, and the Genetics Society of Japan. So I believe uh, everyone knows uh, Dr. Ota's tremendous amount of contribution to genetics, especially to population genetics and molecular and genome evolution. And she was awarded the Crawford Award a prize for 2015 and also many, many other awards. 
So one of the big, her biggest contributions uh, is the proposal of the nearly neutral theory in 1973, which should be the main topic of her talk today. So it was five years after the proposal of uh, uh, neutral theory by Moto Kimura. And the neutral theory was not well accepted in the community at that time because it didn't explain two major things, okay? Uh, one, if we assume the mutation rate is roughly constant over species, then the neutral theory predicts that the level of polymorphism is proportional to the population size. But see, uh, the level of polymorphism of human is only, it's 0.1% yeah, or something. And those for Drosophila and E. coli are only several percent and not much, not big difference. Why? Uh, human population size should be much, much smaller than Drosophila, uh, population sizes of Drosophila and E. coli and at least in several orders of magnitude smaller. And it doesn't look like uh, the neutral theory is correct. Okay, this is the first problem. Second, uh, again, if we assume the mutation rate is roughly constant over species, then the neutral theory predicts that the speed of molecular evolution per generation should be the same all over the species. Okay, but. And the rate of molecular evolution is not fast in rodent if we compare with that of human. But the generation time of rodent is you know, like 10 weeks and much, much shorter than human. We, we, our generation time is at least 15 years or maybe 20 years, right? Again, you know, uh, the prediction of a neutral theory doesn't look like correct. And this is the second problem. Then what happened? Now, here comes uh, Dr. Orta's nearly neutral model, which solves the, these two problems completely. Um, the trick is that nearly neutral mutation rate depends on the population size. If the fitness effect of a mutation follows a certain distribution, like a normal distribution or uh, gamma distribution, whatever. So nearly neutral mutations are defined as those show similar behavior to neutral mutations. In a large population, the proportion of nearly neutral mutation is small because selection works efficiently, right? But in a small population, drift dominate. So quite a lot of mutation behave as if they are neutral. So the nearly neutral mutation rate is negatively correlated with the population size. So the effect of population size on the level of polymorphism and the rate of molecular evolution is somehow canceled out. That explains our observation quite well. So it's a fantastic idea. But uh, here, uh, I have one episode I want to introduce to you. Uh, it was a long time ago when I was a graduate student. Um, Dr. Ota presented a talk and I was there, sitting there. And after her talk, one guy came up and asked a question. How did you come up with this fantastic idea about the nearly neutral theory? Then Dr. Ota replied, okay, that's nothing special. I just modeled as it should be. Okay, uh, so now we know molecular biology. We know how genomes look like. So in protein coding regions, some mutations has to be deleterious, while there are a lot big, you know, large regions of junk DNA where most mutations should be neutral or nearly neutral. So the new, nearly neutral model will describe the genome configuration. Actually, nothing special right now, but you know, back to the age of that time, you know, 
in the middle of the battle between neutralists and uh, selectionists. Um, there are, they are arguing, you know, all neutral versus all selection, right? It was kind of a black and white problem and nobody considered the problem as Dr. Ota did. So this episode tells you how ahead she was at that time. Uh, it was just a natural, straightforward idea for her, but it surprised the community a lot. So today, uh, she will present a talk entitled Near Neutrality uh, Epigenetics and Transposable Elements. So we will see, you know, even now she's still quite ahead, catches up the front of molecular biology and considers how her nearly neutral model explains the genome evolution. All right, I'm done and I'm happy to pass my, the mic to Dr. Ota. Please go ahead. Uh, thank, I thank Hideki Inna for a uh, detailed interaction, uh, an introduction on the nearly neutral theory. And thank you so much. I also thank uh, organizers for giving me this opportunity to give this seminar. The title of my talk, uh, Near Neutrality, Epigenetics, and Transposable Element. I uh, uh, review a little bit on uh, the time about uh, more, a little more than half century ago. Uh, sorry, I, I, I had some trouble. On, uh, that, I, that's I, fine. Just delighted I, that you're back. Uh, I thank Inan for his introduction in uh, detail or nearly somewhat detailed nearly neutral theory. And uh, I also thank uh, organizers for uh, uh, giving me this opportunity to present this seminar talk. Uh, I started a little more than a, a half century ago. Uh, uh, 1960s, and uh, uh, it was a great time to start uh, molecular evolution research. And uh, uh, we had lots of discussion in Kimura Labo about molecular evolution, just started to for the research in that laboratory. And uh, uh, by examining the neutral theory, I recognized the three uh, questions, uh, borderline, what are borderline mutations? And uh, molecular evolutionary rate dependent on year, heterozygosity, rather narrow range uh, among various species. And because of this uh, third problem, uh, evolutionary and population genetics, people thought the neutral theory was uh, wrong and uh, they consider adaptive change at the molecular evolution. And I, I recognized uh, uh, by bringing very slightly deleterious mutations into the neutral model, these problems may be answered. This is because, oh, this is the uh, fixation probability of mutant as function. This is fixation probability, and this is uh, uh, intensity of selection, NES, product of population size and, and selection coefficient. What I had interested in by nearly neutral model is this area. If I bring population size bigger, uh, uh, fixation probability less and less, a negative correlation between uh, evolutionary rate, that is fixation probability, and population size. That Inansan explained to, to some extent. Uh, 
under uh, which uh, negative correlation may be cancelled by a uh, uh, large organisms tend to have uh, long generation time and small population size. And that kind of relationship cancel each other and would lead to rough uniformity. And uh, this is a diagram to show uh, uh, three theories. Selection theory, neutral theory, nearly neutral theory. Uh, deleterious, advantageous, deleterious, advantageous, neutral between. And nearly neutral theory, between selected and neutral, nearly neutral class, uh, uh, very weak effect on fitness. This includes both positive and negative one. And uh, the, uh, the theory was much criticized in previous uh, century uh, uh, by uh, evolutionary and population geneticists. Uh, as I said, they, uh, they disagreed on this prediction. And uh, uh, however, in this uh, 21st century, a uh, large amount of data become available because of genome projects going on. And uh, large uh, data generally support the prediction of the nearly neutral model. Uh, uh, this, is, this was uh, examined by com uh, calculating non-synonymous and synonymous mutation uh, rate. Now, in previous century, uh, uh, molecular evolutionary rate was known to differ among various uh, proteins. And the difference in evolutionary rate is determined. Was, uh, well, it was thought that the difference in rate was determined by protein uh, structure constraint. Proteins form some tertiary structure, and this uh, structure causes difference in constraint. And uh, at that time, uh, we thought that uh, protein structure was static and fixed one, very static one. However, in this uh, 21st century, it, it has been uh, uh, recognized that uh, protein folding is very dynamic and uh, uh, up to 50% of human proteins uh, contain intrinsically disordered region. These regions do, do not form uh, tertiary structure, and therefore they have a uh, uh, constraint is less in disordered region than in uh, 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 ordered, uh, I, I, I mean, um, folding part. And uh, the constraint of this ordered region seems to be a, a protein uh, composition and a length. This is weak constraint as compared to a structured region and uh, these uh, disordered region have lots of uh, modifications phosphorylation uh, methylation things like that and uh, this is uh, uh, less constrained and constrained and evolving rapidly compared to structured region nevertheless uh, uh, this uh, post translational modification and seem to be uh, uh, involved in signal, uh, signaling system. So, this may uh, selective constraint is 
We, nevertheless, this may be important. Um, this area is still in progress. Now consider human genome. Uh, it is about it, it has about three billion base pairs and uh, protein coding regions, very, very minor fraction. And uh, what are these large non-coding regions? Uh, mostly junk or uh, maybe related to gene regulation uh, before molecular clarification of uh, this mean genome, uh, uh, lots of uh, discussion was going on uh, about uh, gene expression problem. And at, at empirically, uh, it had been known that gene expression is very robust and uh, 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 plastic. And uh, uh, some people thought this uh, large region might be regulation related. And I thought if uh, such a vast majority of genome region uh, uh, in regulatory system related, uh, most change might be nearly neutral. Uh, uh, now, in this century, ENCODE project go going on, and uh, it had been found many transcripts with unknown function or without constraint exist in human cells. Almost all regions of the human genome are transcribed if you examine uh, all tissues, various tissues, of uh, uh, if, if you examine various tissues, uh, all, uh, all non-coding region, uh, almost all non-coding region transcribed. I immediately thought such a large amount of transcript uh, uh, product should be nearly neutral. However, in this uh, uh, in this uh, uh, report, it was argued that uh, once they are transcribed, they might have some effect and uh, might uh, uh, be under selection. And uh, I, I thought they are very they must be very weak. And also, if such large amount of transcripts uh, occurring, uh, they might uh, provide opportunities for a new gene regulation system. And it is now a non-coding RNA, uh, many research going on, uh, long non-coding RNA. According to the, this uh, report, uh, um, most most of them are cell type specific, few copies per cell, and uh, they argue uh, they they uh, state that uh, uh, they are concerned with transcriptional interference and some effect on chromatin activity, and, and also most of these long non-coding RNAs are rapidly evolving or turning over. Uh, they include lots of nearly neutral changes. Now, in thinking a uh, function of RNA molecules in a cell, uh, RNA binding proteins seem to be very important. Uh, this uh, this uh, bring uh, another layer of complexity in gene uh, uh, activity. Uh, RNA binding pre proteins, again, it may be a structured part, structured uh, region uh, bind uh, and uh, 
This had been known for a long time. However, it, recently it was found that intrinsically disordered region also uh, uh, high combined RNA and have a significant effect on RNA binding and fa function. And uh, uh, these splicing factors, uh, polyadenylation and translation, all these important processes and others are influenced by this RNA binding proteins. Uh, another complexity of uh, RNA function inside the cell is competitive endogenous RNA. Uh, microRNA, uh, uh, lots of RNA, micro RNA transcribed in a cell, and uh, uh, this uh, bind to RNA recognition elements in transcripts. And uh, uh, there are so many micro RNAs; uh, they compete for uh, uh, this binding site on um, uh, 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 transcript and uh, uh, this competitive RNA uh, uh, seems to be another uh, complication layer of uh, gene activity. Now let us uh, uh, examine genome, ac genome fa accessibility problem. Uh, a human genome, accessible region and non-accessible region. And accessibility uh, is measured by DNAs1 hypersensitivity in, in this uh, 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 report. And uh, accessibility uh, depends upon uh, uh, very various uh, uh, complicated uh, 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 protein uh, machines uh, for nucleus of packaging and positioning, and uh, these are very com complex, complicated system. Uh, and uh, 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 now people uh, uh, um, uh, analyze, uh, study, accelerate uh, human uh, uh, DNA is one hypersensitive site. Uh, if you examine these sites uh, among uh, mammalian species, Many of these uh, sites are conserved uh, because uh, they must have in, uh, some function for a gene regulation. And, uh, uh, however, some set of uh, DH, hypersensitive sites uh, uh, show acceleration pattern in human lineage. And, uh, these uh, 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 papers argue that this region acceleration in uh, human lineage implies uh, uh, adaptive change of gene regulation system. And so this is very important for uh, 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 evolution. And uh, uh, they, they are, uh, I examined their report, uh, evolutionary rate, uh, four times the neutral rate, acceleration. And uh, this paper, three times the neutral rate. And if you compare this uh, acceleration by fixation probability, uh, uh, calculated by Kimura formula, uh, Acceleration, uh, three or four times 
the neutral rate here, neutral rate implies uh, 2ns is about 2. So uh, this is the product of population size and, and selection coefficient. This, uh, this is rather weak selection. Maybe uh, lots of uh, drift and selection interaction going on. Now, uh, in uh, acceleration uh, problem, uh, it uh, depends on chromatin structure. Chromatin is a highly complex uh, uh, multi-protein complex and RNAs are uh, involved. And uh, uh, histone uh, includes uh, intrinsically disordered region, the structured domain. And uh, structured domain uh, mostly for chromatin structure, whereas disordered region, uh, various modifications and signaling. And this is a nice system for chromatin uh, uh, to, uh, to uh, 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 chromatin structure uh, 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 properties and signaling. And this is very uh, important for signaling. And uh, also this uh, chromatin uh, structure is uh, highly uh, versatile and well organized. For example, topologically associated domains, lots of argument going on, uh, uh, self-interacting regions, this may be very uh, 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 efficient for enhancer-promoter interaction, for example. And uh, for a uh, proper function of uh, chromatin, uh, Modifying enzymes uh, such as acetylation, methylation, phosphorylation are uh, very important. And uh, uh, some uh, uh, modifying enzymes, methylation, methylase, or acetylase, uh, some uh, uh, domain shuffling taking place and uh, dynamically evolving and, and uh, uh, this uh, uh, provide uh, a significant uh, effect on uh, uh, gene activity. Uh, another in another uh, uh, example. Uh, 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 acting, um, helping for chromatin structure and function, uh, there are numerous uh, multi-protein and RNA complex involved here. One example is mammalian swift snuff demodeling complex. And uh, uh, this uh, article uh, 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 15 subunits, this complex, encoded by 29 genes, and uh, uh, more than 20% uh, of human can cancer, and uh, defective mutation of a specific unit uh, becomes specific cancer. Somehow, uh, if a unit of this complex become defective, uh, it cause uh, human can cancer. But uh, the uh, individual uh, protein of a complex uh, may be substantial fraction, may be nearly neutral again. Uh, now, uh, uh, there are so many molecular machineries uh, com 
complex systems on chromatin structure and function at the periphery of gene activity uh, transcription factor bind to regulatory sites of on human genome and uh, they argue that uh, specificity affinity trade-off on transcription factor binding remember there are many paralogous transcription factors and they bind to similar binding sequence for uh, 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 to avoid confusion among paralogous TFs, uh, uh, combinatorial and low affinity specificity is uh, quite good for uh, 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 the system, for a nice uh, uh, activity of uh, transcription factor binding. And, uh, uh, so specificity affinity trade-off uh, constantly transcribed proteins uh, 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 affinity strong and uh, it, it is uh, reported that uh, uh, they provide transcription binder uh, 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 this uh, affi raw affinity uh, provide uh, robust and plastic gene expression. Uh, again, at this level, uh, robustness uh, uh, increase. And also this uh, uh, raw affinity and combinatorial uh, regulatory region often uh, uh, rapid evolution um, so some may be nearly new to that uh, now uh, let me go into a uh, uh, problem of transposable element uh, uh, transposable element uh, I, I said um, um, the non-coding region, large fraction of human genome, non-coding. What are they? Junk, selfish, parasite? Lots of argument went on. And uh, transposable element occupy more than half of such regions. More than half. Uh, uh, you remember, we remember that uh, genome size in bacteria cannot increase. In addition to um, energy and other these problems, uh, 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 this uh, Fedorov argued that uh, cannot increase because, well, uh, increase in uh, increase of transposable element in eukaryote genome this is that occurs because silencing machine eukaryote uh, transposable element could expand in bacteria no such system so uh, once the transposable element get into their genome they get off uh, we are not useful and uh, uh, you carry out this expanded and however thinking transposable element expansion uh, uh, the stress is very important because transposable element activation occur uh, under stress. What is stress? Stress is here defined as any factor that uh, disrupt 
homeostasis of cells. Anything that disrupts homeostasis, uh, uh, pathogen, uh, hybridization, or environmental shock, or anything that uh, cause uh, uh, homeo disrupt homeostasis. And uh, uh, it is argued uh, uh, this uh, genomic shock because of stress and activation, uh, this is the driving force of evolution. This provides evolvability, original idea by Barbara McClintock, in, according to Federal. This is a, a, a very a, a interesting idea, and uh, and and uh, also um, I would I like I have to say that uh, this. Uh, uh, transposable element uh, activated region uh, much overlap with DNA one sensitivity side overlap on these uh, 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 genome uh, activity side overlap and uh, in thinking stress and transposable element activity, uh, uh, transposable element uh, by stress reactivation. Oh, this is a bad side of transposable element activity. Deleterious side. Genome instability, dysregulation of genes, disease and aging. Uh, in fact, silent uh, heterochromatin decay by aging, silencing machinery deteriorate by aging. And this is a good estimator of uh, uh, functional decay by aging. Uh, this is a uh, uh, bad side of transposable element activity. This is one good side, good example of transposable element activity that is to, uh, human brain evolution. Uh, a few, uh, transposable element, some family of transposable element and uh, 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 some family of transcription factors are uh, tightly uh, connected. Uh, one, one case here is a, a club containing zinc finger transcription factors. This is an important transcription factor gene family in human genome. Uh, important gene family. Um, club domain uh, recruit silencing machinery with some other co-factors. They recruit silencing. And zinc finger domain, uh, this is uh, uh, specifically bind to DNA binding site, regulatory site. And uh, uh, many uh, uh, some family of transcription, uh, uh, transposable element family are silenced by club zinc finger transcription factors. However, some are uh, reactivated uh, if uh, this silencing machinery disrupted. And uh, T transposable element embedded regulatory sequence in the genome, uh, they uh, some specific pair between 
transposon element regulatory sequence and uh, uh, member of uh, club containing zinc finger transcription factor. This uh, transposable element and transcription factor pair seem to be very efficient for attaining new gene network. And uh, these pair uh, 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 show spatiotemporal expression in some uh, areas of developing human brain. Uh, this is a very nice system to, uh, to attain uh, complex gene regulation network, spatiotemporal expression and in human brain, differentiation because of this uh, 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 TE, TF pair activity. And uh, uh, some uh, regulatory region of T, uh, this uh, embedded regulatory region might diverge too much by mutation, uh, then uh, transcription factor gene family uh, expand and uh, another uh, uh, transcription factor may uh, pair with this uh, uh, with such region and this uh, uh, change of, of the pair uh, uh, they say arms race between regulatory region and TFs and if uh, this uh, uh, this uh, embedded regulatory sequence uh, overlap with uh, DHS uh, DNA sensitive site uh, and uh, uh, this uh, I had uh, I, I, I was uh, uh, puzzled by uh, how such uh, DHS uh, evolution takes place ordinary gene duplication by uh, differentiation uh, seem to be uh, not uh, enough for uh, and this now this uh, transposable element system and uh, this uh, transcription factor gene family uh, uh, system seem to be a very efficient way for uh, obtaining uh, uh, complex regulatory gene network. Uh, I, I recognized this subject only um, recently and uh, I, I put previous genotype and phenotype, uh, epigenetics, maturation, and these robust system and Co-option and so on. I put transposable element expansion, silencing, activation. So evolution of complex systems, uh, epigenetics, drift, transposable element, and natural selection were all work together, and uh, numerous molecular machineries involved very, very complex systems. Uh, and this is, uh, this is uh, I, all I want to say. Uh, I, uh, um, I would like to thank uh, National Institute of Genetics for uh, uh, let me uh, uh, study and uh, also, uh, oh, particularly uh, Akashi Lab members for uh, uh, providing uh, 
an uh, excellent environment to continue my study. Uh, uh, thank you, everyone, for your attention. Thank you. I hugely enjoyed the talk from Professor Ota. I'd just like to call on Professor Phil Betterham uh, to say a few words to close the seminar. It's been my great pleasure to uh, be involved in this seminar today. Um, I began studying genetics way back in 1973 when uh, your most famous uh, paper was published that made the world rethink about how variation was maintained in natural populations. And I've been a population geneticist ever since. Mm -hmm. um, it's been a, a wonderful seminar and we are very thankful to have had you speaking to us today. I'd like to thank all of the attendees that have joined us from around the world, uh, Genetic Society of Japan and Genetic Society of Australasia and Genomics Aotearoa for hosting the seminar today. It's been wonderful to be able to unite in this way. And we hope that even further reach will, um, that our future seminars will have even broader reach. And we're really interested in engaging with other genetic societies in the Asia Pacific region. So please join me in thanking Professor Ota uh, for a wonderful seminar today.